Um, I made a point earlier. The, the, the complexity, the, the, the diversity of the suppliers that are engaged in this industry, the, the, the different standards, the, the, inter, the interdependency, the, the vulnerabilities that come from just the rapid growth of any industry, particularly the ICT industry, and, and the intrinsic global transnational nature of this. Uh, Ted, Ted's talked about a French company, and I've heard you say Chinese telecoms a, a few dozen times. There is no French company, and there are no Chinese telecoms. Cisco, Alcatel-Lucent, Nokia, Siemens, Ericsson, Huawei, ZTE, we're all global companies. Every one of us is a Chinese telecom. And if we're going to start, but every one of us is also a multinational telecom. It, the, the vulnerabilities are common. The rogue can be anywhere in terms of any input. We, Huawei is proud of, of its heritage, and, and, and we certainly can't change it. We, we were conceived where we were conceived. But as, because of the, the, the points that Mark made about the political elements of this conversation, we acknowledge that our headquarters is in China and our heritage is in China, and so we actually go the extra mile when it comes to security assurance. There's almost a certain irony to that. The, the procedures that we've put in place in terms of end-to-end -end cybersecurity assurance programs that touch on personnel, they touch on policy, they touch on organization, process, including manufacturing and research and development and and and, and and, and product management and technology and regulations, these are state of the art, as led, as Ted mentioned, by the former CIO of, of the UK government. When Huawei, is, arguably, our solutions are because of the rigor that we put into this, because of the political issues, arguably, our solutions are more secure than those of our competitors. However, since we're all building to the same global standards to ensure interoperability, to ensure competition, as soon as our more secure network attaches to someone else's network that hasn't been through the same rigor, the entire network is vulnerable. This goes to the point that I made earlier and that Ted has also made. We need to acknowledge that these are all global companies, that these are all companies that share vulnerabilities in terms of the supply chain that we need to have a common discipline, common processes, common practices across all of the disciplines for, from personnel through product management, for, through product development, through, through logistics, through supply chain, through aftermarket, so that we can ensure that the bar is raised for everyone and consistently. Otherwise, the result is fragmentation. Even when we do that, from an equipment perspective, even when we do that, all of us, industry and government working together to not have fragmented non-global solutions that could also introduce the, the, that set precedents that you would never want to see picked up in other markets. Even when we do that, we have to acknowledge that cyber activity will not stop. You, you can go back and do a catalog of, of the last 10 years and from Moonlight Maze through Titan Rain, through Night Dragon, through Estonia, through Georgia, through GhostNet to Stuxnet. All of this activity was also transnational and also completely agnostic to whose equipment was in the network. A botnet driven de distributed denial of service attack does not care who built the network or who's managing the network. So we have challenges that go well beyond ensuring the supply chains are secure. But the only way that we can ensure the supply chains are secure is by setting the bar consistently and higher for everyone. Because if everyone is not adhering to the level of practices that a Huawei is, then as soon as you see the interconnection of network equipment, your vulnerability has been reintroduced.